Hello, I hope this video finds you well. Tonight we are looking at extra end from strings one, and this is the Java implementation. Problem states, given a string, return a new string made of three copies of the last two chars of the original string. The string length will be at least two. So this is a really key line here. It tells us the length of the string, and that tells us that we don't have to kind of deal with a situation if the length is less than two. Um, and we could run into some problems there, because if you try and access the last two letters of a string, which is a length less than two, you're going to get an index out of bounds error. So if we look at the examples here, hello returns low, 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 ab returns ab, 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 and hi returns hi, hi, hi. So what we have to do here is we have to access the last two characters of the string. And, you know, if you're a beginning programmer, what it, the big idea here, the big idea is that, you know, strings have length and indexes 0 to length minus 1. So if I have, for example, here, hello, that has indexes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and it is a length of 5. And so when I'm working with students and they're trying to figure this out the very first time, is I always remind them to write a concrete case, and then once you've dealt with that concrete case, to generalize it. So what I could do here is I could do return. Well, if it's hello, I'm going to do str.substring. And if I want the last two letters of hello, I'm going to pass it 3, 5, remembering that substring is inclusive, exclusive. And now I'll take this and copy it and paste it twice more, because I want three times. I hit go. Oh, I forgot a semicolon. Too much Python. And we see that it works in cases when the word is of length 5. So now I have to generalize this. And so what I might do now is I might do something like, okay, well, what about AB? So AB is a length of 2. And in this case, if I did this with substring, this would be 0, 2, 0, 2, 0, 2. And I hit go. And there it works for anything that is a length of 2, but nothing else. So now let's generalize it. So then I would say to students, OK, well, in this case, your substring is going to be 3, 5. And in this case, your substring is going to be 0, 2. And I say, how does that relate back to your length? Well, we see the second parameter is always the length of the string. So I'm going to say int l equals str.length. And then I'm going to say l, l, l. And I say, OK, now how does this relate to the length? Well, this is always the length minus 2. So this is going to be l minus 2, l minus 2 and L minus 2. I hit go. Oh, I forgot a semicolon again. And there it is. Of course, you could do this in one line simply by taking this str.length and then calculating it right in the line. All right. Now I'm going to do this just actually two more different ways. Um, the first one is just a little bit of a modification for readability here. Um, again, I'm just showing this to you because a lot of times students will say, I did it this way, is this okay? And it perfectly is. So if I say string something like str2 and I make that equal to this str.substring, right? So I essentially I calculate it once and then I say str2 plus str2 plus str2, remembering my semicolons, of course. There we go. And I hit go. Notice that works as well. This one, some people find a little easier. Now, before I go, I'm going to do this in actually a not very efficient way, because this is actually the precursor to a much more complicated version of it, relatively speaking, where imagine I didn't want the last two letters three times, but n times. So n could be variable. It could be, you know, it changes every time. Or I could say something like 500 times, in which case you're not going to write that out 500 times. This is where a loop comes in useful. Loops are useful. So what I'll do is I'll use string construction loops. So I'm going to make an int l equals str.length. So I'll calculate the length of that string. And then I'm going to make a new S string called str2, and that's going to be an empty string. So now I'm going to write a loop that's going to run three times. So for int i equals 0, i is less than 3, i is equal to i plus 1, this count check change notation. 
So this counter i will start at 0, and this code block will run as long as i is less than 3. So that will run as long as i is equal to 0, 1, or 2, three times. And I'm going to say str2 is equal to str2 plus str.substring l minus 2 comma l. And then I'll return str2. Oh, that's semicolon again. Again, is this overkill for this situation? Totally. Um, this problem is just wanting to make sure you understand how substring works and concatenation. But where you'll see problems that get slightly more complicated, so if you can understand how this works, that's really going to help you with stuff later on. I hope this video helped, and please don't hesitate to ever reach out. Have a great day.